Russia's large-scale war against Ukraine has not made tanks obsolete, but it has forced their operations to act more cautiously. As The Telegraph writes, the front is filled with small drones. The threat from these drones, which can carry grenades or explosives, forces tank crews to hide and operate covertly in order to survive. Drones are crisscrossing the airspace, hunting high-value targets like armored vehicles and artillery, notes David Kirichenko for the Center for European Policy Analysis in Washington. This has led to significant changes in the way tanks are used. The new era of the cautious tank is very different from the old days when tanks could roam freely on the battlefield even during daylight hours. Back then, the main threats included mines, artillery, handheld anti-tank weapons and other tanks, but not drones. However, the latest drones have changed the game dramatically, as was evident with the start of the Russian invasion of Ukraine in 2022. Russian tank columns attempting to break through to Kyiv were constantly monitored by Ukrainian drones, allowing artillery and anti-tank forces to effectively set up ambushes. By 2023, the situation was complicated by the advent of FPV drones, which can attack tanks from unprotected angles, from above or behind. Ukraine now produces about 3 million of these drones a year, and Russia is trying to keep up. Most tanks were designed to withstand attacks from the front or sides, but drones can strike from unpredictable directions. As a tanker named Bogdan noted, a $500 FPV drone can destroy a tank worth millions. FPV drones have become one of the main threats to tanks on both sides of the conflict. According to Oryx analysts, Russia has lost about 3,300 tanks during the war, which is equal to its pre-war stock. Ukraine has lost almost 900 tanks, which is also equal to its pre-war stock. Today, tanks are rarely used in massive attacks, as they were in the past, and their crews are more cautious than ever. Tanks operate from cover and use additional defenses to minimize the risks from drones. Although tanks have lost their former effectiveness, as tanker Viktor notes, they remain an important element on the battlefield. However, drones have forever changed the nature of tank warfare. An American volunteer veteran who fought in the wars in Iraq, Afghanistan and Ukraine said that the difference between expectations from previous military experience and the reality that U.S. Marine Corps sniper and International Legion volunteer Matthew Sampson faced in the war in Ukraine is quite significant. The first is the differences between the two armies, which were in terms of resources compared to what the U.S. military is used to. The U.S. military has a lot of resources and experience with logistics but it also has to do with the fact that we have the money to have these resources. I quickly realized that Ukraine is doing everything it can in very difficult conditions. It's just that the situation is bad and Ukraine does not have the capacity to provide enough of everything that is needed. You need weapons, ammunition. And this is what President Zelensky constantly talks about. He clearly emphasizes, just send weapons and ammunition. We will fight ourselves. Give us the tools so that we can fight this fight. Samson said. The second is the big difference in the fighting and tactics of war in Ukraine compared to Iraq and Afghanistan. The fighting in Bakhmut, Donetsk Oblast, in which the American volunteer took part, reminded him of the battle for Stalingrad 
during World War II. There were simply no such battles in Iraq and Afghanistan. Even if you look at the examples of the Marines who participated in clearing places like Fallujah city of Iraq, they cleared every room and building in that huge place. But the enemy did not have tanks, artillery or aircraft. The enemy had improvised explosive devices, Kalashnikov assault rifles, but there was no regular army. The battles in Bakhmut were completely different. We were attacked by tanks, helicopters, artillery, he said. Most of the fighting in Ukraine is with trenches, drones and artillery. In Iraq and Afghanistan, there were no trenches at all because they are simply not needed there. American forces and NATO controlled everything that was happening in the air. Most of our major operations were conducted at night because the enemy did not have significant thermal imaging capabilities. We all had night vision devices. When I came here, I saw that almost no one had such night vision devices. At that time, the enemy sometimes had thermal imaging devices which made night operations too dangerous. This is completely different from the Western doctrine, according to which they try to do more at night. The American volunteer veteran explained, some of the tactics the US military used in Iraq and Afghanistan simply don't work in Ukraine, even though they are supposed to work for this war. This is a completely different battlefield, he stressed.